Hello, doctor. Uh, four months on a strict keto. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for the super chat. Uh, and goes on to say, hello, doctor. Four months on a strict keto uh, diet since last October. Um, from 10th of February on carnivore, after two weeks of carnivore, horrible gout attacks in the elbow. Two weeks later, another attack in both elbows, uric acid above 430. Well, um, speaking with people that have had gout, now, first of all, preface this by saying that that Dr. Salisbury and others have been treating gout since the 1800s by putting people on a pure red meat and water diet. So, you know, that's already in that's already in the established literature. And this is something that a lot of people around the world are finding that this helps their gout. But one thing that they do report is that they can get a couple gout attacks after going carnivore and that that uh, you know they'll still get they may still get a couple gout attacks but then it goes away. You sort of weather the storm and you get through it and then it goes away and generally doesn't come back. Um, the other thing to remember is that there is uh, more than one cause of gout. So when we think of gout as just uric acid crystals in the joint, but there's actually five different uh, causes for uh, gout. And one of them is oxalates. So oxalate crystals getting in the joint um, are, are part of gout. And um, now they're sort of called pseudo gout, but that, that, you know, up until, you know, the 2000s, it was called gout. And so, um, you know, that's something just to, uh, just to remember that, um, uh, that it could be uric acid crystals, but however, there are people that have high uric acid serum levels that actually don't get gout. And there are people with low uric acid levels that do get gout. So it's not actually just a, a direct one-to-one. -one. You have high uric acid levels and you get uh, uric acid in your joints. It's a sort of a, the, just, you know, the, the uric acid is not supposed to get there. It's not just because it's in your serum. It's, it shouldn't get there no matter what. Uric acid is one of your body's strongest antioxidants. It's actually not a bad thing to have that a bit higher. Um, the way you, you diagnose gout, you know, the uric acid version of gout is you stick a needle in this inflamed, painful joint and you aspirate some and you say, okay, what are the crystals in there? Uh, if they're uric acid crystals, fine, uric acid crystals, but they may not be. There's, there's four other causes. So either way, it, it may not, it may not be an issue. It could just pass on its own and it may not be uric acid crystals. Um, you know, you went from keto to carnivore. So you're eating vegetables and meat. And now you're eating just meat. Sometimes you can get oxalate dumping where your body's stored up a lot of oxalates from these plants like spinach and sweet potatoes and other sorts of things. And they store up in your tissues and then your body starts releasing these things to get this stuff out of there. And sometimes it can do that in an overwhelming fashion and you can get gout. You can get joint pain. You can get rashes. You can get all sorts of different, different symptoms, kidney stones, things like that. So you know, one thing you could try doing is having, you know, putting some lemon juice in water or having, you know, just some, you know, weak tea or something like that, uh, just on its own. Those are going to have a bit of oxalates on it. You may have like 50, 75 milligrams of oxalates in, in you know, in a day and, uh, and see what happens. Sometimes that can suppress the, the release of oxalates. And, you know, if you find that that helps you, then that could be what's going on, not necessarily uric acid gout, but it could be, uh, oxalate gout, and that can sort of slow down the release of uh, the oxalate crystals and and maybe relieve your symptoms. So something to think about. Either way, when people have true gout, um, sometimes they they have a couple other flare ups, but what people have been reporting is that it then goes away and stays away. So uh, good luck with that. Hopefully that settles down very soon. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor at Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. For those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the carnivore market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat-only products there will be available in the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind, Behind. Check it out using my discount code Anthony to get 10% off, which also applies to subscriptions, giving you 25% off total. All right, thanks guys. If you're really just eating just meat, salt, and water, uh, gout should go away. Sometimes you you know maybe need a little help with some medications, but 
from now I've never suffered with gout, but I've, I've spoken to a lot of people who, who do, and I've gone on a carnivore diet. Some just sort it out right away and it, it never comes back. Um, uh, some people said they basically get like one or two flare ups and then, and then it goes away. And if they, you know, they sort of power through it, um, it goes away and then it stays away. There are other forms of gout than just uric acid crystals. Um, there's some, there's like five, I believe. Now they're being called pseudo gout and then gout gout is, uh, referring to uric acid crystals, but things like oxalates can cause, um, can cause gout or pseudo gout now. Um, same symptoms. And so, you know, if you're oxalate dumping and getting rid of all this sort of stuff, you know, that can cause, you know, uh, weird pain and gout pain and joint pain and that sort of thing. So something to think about there. And you can look at uh, Sally Norton's work to sort of see if you think that that might be something that's apl applicable to you. Um, I don't, I don't necessarily think that's a kidney issue. I mean, you definitely do drink enough water to make sure that you're not, um, that you're, you're filtering things out easily enough. Weight loss, um, weight loss can be, can be slow. Like I, I said before, and if you're lifting weights and working out, which I encourage you to do, um, you'll encourage your metabolism, you'll encourage your body to use more fat, but you'll also put on muscle at the same time which will offset the weight that you're losing. So I wouldn't worry too much about the weight. Um, just keep eating fatty meat until it stops tasting good. Um, don't eat anything else. You know, if you need some medications to help with, with the pain or the gout, um, then that's fine um, for the short term. Hopefully you won't need that long term. Generally don't. Um, and then think of the other, other things that can cause joint pain and gout, such as oxalates as well. Um, and uh, yeah, those are some of the things to think about anyway. But most people will get through this. This will just, you know, take a bit of time. It's it's a lot more difficult for some people to transition um, based on their past and what they were eating before. So good luck with that. Jeff says, wondering if this helps gout or uh, lymphedema. Yeah, it does. So uh, Dr. Salisbury was using a red meat and water diet, exclusively red meat and water diet since the 1800s to cure gout. And so it's not red meat that causes gout, it's all the other crap that comes with it. And so some people find that they get like a flare up or two of gout since then, but uh, you know, after going carnivore, but then it settles down and goes away and doesn't come back. There are other ca causes of gout besides uric acid crystals as well. There's actually like five causes. Now some of those things are being called pseudo gout now. Uh, and one of them is oxalates. oxalates are a known cause of gout it used to be called gout now pseudo gout um and um and so you know you can get like you know oxalate dumping and things like that potentially so down the road potentially you could get like a bit of a flare-up uh, and joint pain and things like that um but uh it would be likely that if you did a, an actual aspirate of the joint you would not find uric acid crystals you'd find oxalate crystals and um it's a difference, but most people do this stuff, uh, you know, just clinically. They just say, oh, that looks like gout. That's gout. That must be uric acid crystals. Well, you don't know unless you actually stick a needle in there and find out. Uh, most people don't do that. And most doctors don't do that because it hurts. And uh, people don't want to do that. They don't want to stick. It's like it hurts enough and you're going to stab me. You know, like, thanks, doc. Um, but uh, so they just say, oh, yeah, must be that. Here's some culture scene. Off you go. Uh, but, uh, but no, people, people do, uh, do fix their gout by going carnivore. And like I said, maybe a, a, a flare up or two, maybe it's uric acid, maybe it's something else. Uh, and then, then tends to go away and, uh, lymphedema. Yeah. There've been more and more and more reports of people, uh, sorting that out very, very easily with a ketogenic carnivore diet. Yep. Hey everyone, really happy to announce a new sponsor for the show and for everybody down in Australia, Stockman Steaks, who are delivering high quality grass fed and finished pasture raised beef and other meats, flash frozen and vacuum sealed to your door. Something that I've been enjoying a lot of myself recently as well. They also have a great range of specialty items such as high fat keto mints and carnivore beef and organs mints with liver, kidneys and beef heart as well. So use code CHAFEE today for a free order of beef mints or another specialty gift along with your order at stockmanstakes.com.au and i'll see you over there thanks guys malia neville thank you very much for the super chat 
Do you know anyone who is Christian that could give a biblical view on your ways? I don't know. Uh, well, Dr. Kiltz is uh, is quite religious and uh, could potentially do that. Um, I don't know who else in the... I don't know who else sort of who has like a channel and things like that might be able to do that. Um, ugh. Well, if people know, if people know of anybody who might be able to give a sort of a biblical interpretation of this, uh, you know, please do uh, put it in the chats and, and, and let us know and um, maybe we can pop it up if we um, if someone has a good idea. Um, you know, uh, Homesick Buckeye is a is a guy I've become friends with. He's actually a Seventh-day Adventist church member, and he sort of found that, uh, like, yep, yeah, nope, this is wrong. <laughs> it's not supposed to eat plants, and that's not making us healthy. And um, so I don't know how much of a biblical scholar he is and, and how much of an interpretation he has done, but I, I do know that he um, is Christian, and, um, and he has a, a YouTube channel as well. I think it is just Homesick Buckeye. Um, Anyway, he's a funny guy, and, uh, and he does he does some funny things on there. And um, he might be able to. Doctor Kills might be able to. Um, you know, I've seen a lot of people comment in here. If someone has is a Christian, has a sort of biblical view on this, you know, maybe we can have a discussion here. Um, you know, one thing that I point out to people is that um, you know the, the Seventh Day Adventists say that we should be in the Garden of Eden diet. We should be doing the Garden of Eden diet, but they say that yeah, well, we actually can't get B12. We lost that ability. That was punishment for the original sin. And now we we need vitamin B12. So, okay, so what, what were people supposed to do for the thousands and thousands and thousands of years up until we were able to supplement with B12? You know, if we were all supposed to be on a, on a vegan diet, on a, on a Garden of Eden diet, and we can't be, that doesn't really make sense. It's not really consistent. And, um, and that's what li the School of Lifestyle Medicine teaches. You have to be on the Garden of Eden diet because the School of Lifestyle Medicine is um, founded by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, who say this as well. Oh, we need to eat what Adam and Eve ate in the in the Garden of Eden. Actually, in the in the Ethiopian uh, canonical texts, they're very clear that Adam and Eve ate meat in the Garden of Eden, and meat is eaten in heaven. And then they come out of uh, the garden for eating a plant. They get punished for eating an apple. Um, I'd probably throw someone out of my house if they... Uh, we're audacious enough to eat an apple in front of me. It's joking, um, and um, and then you know Adam and Eve had Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain gave uh, uh, you know his his crops as a sacrifice to God. God didn't care for it. Adam gave uh, the meat uh, from his herds. He was a herder and gave a sacrifice of meat. God was pleased, and uh, they don't say why. It doesn't say why. It doesn't say well. You know, your the sacrifice wasn't in your heart. I mean, a lot of people can interpret what they want, but what it says in the Bible is that Abel gave to God sacrifice of meat. God was pleased. Cain gave a sacrifice of plant. God was displeased. That's all it says. It doesn't say that Cain had hate in his heart or anything like that. It just said pleased and displeased. That's all it says. And then Cain gets pissed off and kills Abel, and uh, you know, which is sort of the first first recorded incidents of um, you know vegan rage right they're just freaking out and trying to trying to smash somebody and uh, and then what happened you know his disciples became horrible and plagued the earth and they were just awful there's a whole bunch of just angry vegans spread across across the world and uh, these these horrible angry you know uh, you know farmers and crop eaters and things like that and then what happened god sent the flood wiped out humanity, uh, except for Noah. He said, you're a good guy. Save all these animals and now eat them. That's, that's literally what it said. It said, you need to eat meat now. This is stupid. This is what going plant-based does to you. This is bad. You know, didn't say that. But if you want to interpret, you know, things, if people are interpreting what was in Cain's heart and all that sort of bullshit, then I get to interpret what God meant by that is that he was, that that people eating plants were bad for the, bad for the planet and uh, and you need to start eating meat, and that was that was what God said. So, and there's like how many 
thousands of examples uh, in the Bible are there of, of eating meat and you need to eat the, you know, the fatted, sacrifice the fatted calf and, you know, give this and do this and do that. You know, in the New Testament and the Old Testament, it's all, you know, there's a lot of these directives about eating meat and things like that. So I wouldn't worry about it. Oh, carnivore kit um, might be a good, uh, good one for that as well. Um, and he's on, he's has a YouTube channel also. And yeah, anybody, anybody who thinks, uh, thinks of another one, you know, just stick it in, stick it in the chat. When you know, we're playing rugby tournaments, either for 15s or for sevens, it's a, uh, you know, it's, it's a long day and, uh, you, you're playing these games and you're really wearing yourself out. You're putting everything out there every minute of the game. Uh, you should be anyway and um, certainly at the higher levels you are or else you're not not getting invited to play 